Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to quickly show you how to prep your plate so you can get started with making paint. In the meantime, you can start on dissolving the gum arabic because I'm quickly going to post a video on the proportions how to make your own binder as well. You can also get started with figuring out what kind of pigments you want to uh, you want to start with. So um, I named a couple of pigments in my previous video. If you haven't checked that out, check out the previous video, class number two. Um, there are great options. If you have any questions about them, please leave a comment down below the previous video as well. Today, I will focus on the plate and the tools that we're going to prep for making paint. So before we get started, we need a couple of things. In front of me, I have a smooth glass surface. I have silicon carbide. I have two kinds of mullers the cheap alternative one which I showed you in previous video and a professional muller with this beautiful surface and this is what we want on this plate as well. So if you don't have a muller that's fine. If you have something with a sandblaster surface it's fine. If you have something with a completely smooth glass surface on the bottom that's also fine because what we're doing here with the silicon carbide or carborundum powder, we're going to roughen the new glass surface, but that will not only happen with the plate, it will also happen with the tool we're using to roughen it. So if you have a, a glass with something very smooth at the bottom, that will also get roughened. If your muller, for instance, will get too smooth at a time, um, this might happen that you're uh, kind of polishing it again, you can re-roughen it with the same powder. I have 400 grit here, and I'm going to get started with just a very small scoop of it. This is a quarter of a teaspoon on my plate. So it's almost like making paint, except this is going to be extremely noisy. So what to add with this powder? I have a spray bottle of water um, and I'm just going to add some water next to it. I'm not going to completely spray into it because that will make the powder fly all over the place. I don't want that. So I'm just going to carefully spray something next to it. Um, I'm not going to mix it with my pellet knife to wetten it. Um, I will use the cheap alternative maybe both of them, to get this mixed, right? So I'm going to wet the bottom. I'm carefully going to wet the plate. As I said, this is going to be noisy. It's a hard uh, grid that will sand the surface of my glass plate. Like I said, it will roughen it. And keep in mind, that the surface that, you're, that you want to use for making paint needs to be prepared with this, in this technique. Right? So if I would only do this circle, this would be the only place that has a roughened surface. So I want to get a surface area roughened as large as possible or as large as you would need. But a little goes a long way in terms of this silicon carbide. So I'm not nearly done, but it's really hard to see how much you've done when the plate is wet. If you want to test that, you need to dry a little piece 
um, so you can see how rough it is. If it's wet, it's the water makes it uh, uh, more translucent or transparent again, so you won't see how rough the surface is, right? So you just continue doing this in a circular motion, right? I want to get small circles, and why do I want to have small circles? If I make big circles, it also almost would be identical to doing this. And if I would keep doing this, or this, I would get lines that would be visible. Uh, more paint will get stuck in that. So by making small circular motions, I'm evenly roughening the surface. It's the same for paint making. Uh, the up and down or sideways motion just doesn't work for me. You can see this is quite a a lightweight thing to use. I prefer using the Muller, but for this video, I will use the tool that was cheapest, so I can show you we can do this with everything that we find suitable for the job. I'm noticing my glass will tip over more easily because it's drying out a little bit, right? It's, it's getting uh, almost sticky. It's, 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 it's a vacuum underneath here. So if it's too dry, just spray a bit of extra water on there. Small circular motions. And let's just for the sake of the rest of the class, use this as well. I know this is. I noticed this is a little bit harder for making paint. I'm, 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 maybe I'm going too fast, right? So if you wanna uh, do this in a uh, on a slower tempo, that might work a little bit better. So looking back at what just happened with with this and and this, I think I'm going too fast. I need to take a step back and. Um, I'm used to the weight of the muller and um, the pace that I'm working, right? So making paint. Take your time, right? Make small circular motions. Still need to get my fingers like really close to this because if I'm doing this, it will only happen like this. So, but take your time. This isn't an ideal muller, but for paint making, I think it is quite suitable for very small batches. Like I said, it was 40 cents. So it wasn't that much, but the nooks and crannies in here aren't ideal. So if you find something <laughs> with a circular shape, please go for this. I'm putting away this now because um, I will try to make paint with it, but for this technique, it's just not ideal. So let's continue with this. This is way better. So for how long should we do this? Let's just find out. So I'm going to clean just a bit in the middle. I'm going to make sure it's completely dry. This is dry and it is already so much more rough. It is sanded, it's less transparent. Um, I like this. So it is already less transparent and you can even hear it when I'm comparing it to something very smooth in the edges you don't see me doing it but I'm now <laughs> rubbing my finger over a very smooth edge in, in comparison with this roughened surface so we're getting there
right? We are doing something with the glass. This is good. But since, you know, we're going to use this plate for making paint, um, we want to make sure that it is, the surface is big enough and we are actually properly going to finish it. So we're going to pay as much attention to all the corners and every bit of the surface of this plate to get it uh, ready for making paint, right? So if you're working on this and you think, okay, I actually need more powder on it because uh, I don't see these gray puddles like this. I can't spread this, but everything is uh, thinned out like this. Just add a bit more, add a bit water, uh, whatever suits you, right? This stuff isn't uh, expensive. It can last you a lifetime uh, just buying a bag of it or a jar of it. Um, just take your time with it. And if you notice it's drying out, like I said before, I'm noticing in the corners a bit, I can spread out it, the moisture from the middle, but we're just adding a bit of water. I'm not going to the complete outsides of the edges. Uh, why am I not doing that? Because I won't be making paint there, right? Um, if my paint would flow off the edges, that would just make a mess. So as you can see, I have this grip piece underneath it. You can use uh, little uh, rubber stickers uh, on the bottom of your plate uh, if you can't find this but this is rather cheap as well you can get this at, at most of the stores I think um, in the Netherlands I bought this from the action for I think a euro uh, and you have a rule that's twice as big as this piece over here uh, which you know you don't need to replace that often uh, if it gets dirty and you don't like that by all means replace it uh, I just took a new one for this video so you can actually see quite well when I'm cleaning the plate where my surface is roughened and where it isn't um, but you know my plate won't go anywhere while it's on this so not only for prepping your plate but also for paint making that is very important So I'm making a big circular motion now because I actually want to spread the grid, the powder over my plate. I'm not using as much as force as well. You can hear the, you can see I'm not pushing down and it's not making as much noise. Now I'm pushing down. So let's see where we're at. Um, what is a wise thing to do at the moment? If I would take this all off, I would lose the powder. Like I said, it's not expensive, but it would be a waste and we want to avoid that. So I am taking my pellet knife. Oh, this is noisy. Oh, this is very noisy. 
I think it, I, I, I don't know if it's as noisy on the microphone, but this is not a sound that I would like to hear every day. So I've, I've taken most of it to the side. I'm taking my cloth here to get a fair bit off. And I am very happy with the result that I have here. This is a structure that I like. It's not too rough. There are people who like it way rougher. Um, but it's very similar to this. Maybe it's even a little bit more rough. Let me get a bit closer. So let, let's hear what this sounds like. And the muller. So this might even be a bit smoother. I'm now going to clean, quickly wipe off the glass here. That's very comparable. And this is so much better than it was because here the sandblasted surface is rough and uneven. I've actually smoothened this out quite a bit. As you can see in the glass here, there's a white spot in the middle. It's actually a little dent in the glass. So it's not as flat as I thought it was, or as, a, as I thought it was. But that's okay, all right? This was a cheap alternative. So if you want to try it out, this is still a very good surface. That you, that you can use for making paint. This was it. So this was the only thing you needed to do for prepping the plate. It wasn't that difficult. You only, you only needed uh, a silicon carbide powder, something to mill with, either it's a professional muller or the cheap alternative. Um, you need an old cutting board that's made of glass um, uh, or this new IKEA plate, which I used. Uh, anything is possible right it's not that difficult to get started you ne just need the right tools i used the 400 grid silicon carbide powder um, you can use rougher but i just prefer this it gives me a smooth but rough surface um, uh, why do i like it it's easier to clean right if i use a very rough surface um, it it takes longer it doesn't really add that much uh, or actually for me, it doesn't really add anything if I would make this more rough uh, for the entire process of making paint. Um, so you're ready with this. Now let's get started with dissolving your gum arabic. I will get started with recording the next video for making the binder. So how much gum arabic you would use uh, with water. Um, just a secret for the next video. I use one part gum arabic and two parts water, right? So if you want to get started with that, get started with that. Let's dissolve the crystals or the powder, whatever you prefer. Um, if you're using pre-made binder, just ignore this and you know wait till we start making paint. Um, but for the next video, you can get started with dissolving the gum arabic. Um, I will make a quick video about it on the proportions of honey and glycerin, how much you sh could add and how much you shouldn't. Right, there's a uh, kind of a minimum and a maximum to it. Um, like I said in my very first video, I won't be telling you my personal recipe, um, but you can get very close, trust me. Um, your plate is ready. You can start dissolve the gum arabic um, and think about what kind of pigment do you want to get started with. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Uh, please like the video if you did. A comment down below if anything happened that didn't happen in the video or anything happened that I uh, didn't tell you about. Um, and, you know, see you next time.